Hello all you wonderful people out there and welcome back to Lynch Paints where I, Lynch, will be showing you how to paint a thermal cannon with the heat metal effects stuff for your Imperial Knights. I won't be showing you how I freehand, I might do that in a future episode, but without further ado, let's get into it. But of course, before we paint our lovely thermal cannon, we're going to need all of these lovely paints right here. We're going to need some tools, we're going to need a big fluffy brush for fluffy dry brushing, a medium fluffy brush for weathering at the end, a medium sized brush for painting, obviously. Uh, we don't need any fine brushes or anything, but perhaps a secondary medium brush might be quite handy as well. And then of course you're going to need your big stompy imperial knight, like this one. So as a first step, we're just going to prime our part in a black spray. Uh, for the purposes of this, I haven't glued the weapon onto the main arm, just because I don't know what uh, weapon loadout my friend wants for his knights. So I'm just going to, I thought I'd do the both at the same time, do a video and paint his knights. Um, so it's like a two birds, one stone really. So. I'm going to start out with grabbing a really nice fluffy brush, something like this. I've had this brush for years and it has served me very, very well. I'm going to want some silver, so for this I'm going to use some Iron Warriors base. And then for dry brushing, we want a tiny amount. And then I want to remove the majority of our brush. And to start with, there's going to be a lot more paint on the brush now than when you come towards the end. So it's a good idea just to put it on the lighter areas, so normally like the, the top of the weapon. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the arm and the rest of the weapon. Now on our next step, we're going to use a brighter silver. <clears throat> so for this, I'm going to use this Grey Knight Steel. And in between using your different colours, try not to wash your brush because it's going to take ages for it to dry. And if your brush is slightly damp, it's just going to cause streaking. And we don't want that. So we want uh, a nice, sort of realistic dry brush. And because we're going to be using mostly metallics for this, it doesn't really quite make sense to have to wash brush out, so avoid it if you can. Um, unless you've got loads of big fluffy brushes that you can just switch out in between, then go for it. And then with this, we're just going to apply just along the top, so the third, where our light source is going to be hitting the model. And then the same with, with the arm. Now onto the next stage. Most thermal cannons tend to have a brassy gold sort of covering on the main plate. So what we're going to use is, because the only gold that I have at the minute is Retribution Armour, most of mine have dried up and gone all the horrible and gunky. So I'm going to mix some of that with some warp block um, bronze. And for these, we'll just do a, probably a go for a 50-50 mix just to start out with. Um, but just gauge it by eye. If you think that it's too dark or not dark enough, then adjust to your own desires, really. Yeah, so this is going to be like a bit of, bit of a heavy dry brush. So while that's dried, I'm going to just go back over the thermal cannon just with a smaller brush with our lighter gold and just create that sort of lighting effect. Now I'm just going to mix in a tiny bit of that Grey Knight steel in with the gold. 
I'm just going to run it just along the top. Now we're just going to give it a good old wash with some Agrax Earthshade. It's going to go all over the model really. So the wash is dried, I've just gone back over the top with some of the gold and a little bit of the Grey Knights thing just mixed in just to reinstate that shine. So now we're going to go over to the weathering part. So we're going to want to grab a dark purple at first, I'm going to use this, um, however you pronounce that, Zer Zer Zerus purple, Zerus purple. And we want a medium sized brush and we're going to wash it down by quite a lot. Effectively making a wash out of it. This is going to be for our burning effect, or like sort of burnt metal. Uh, and we want to try and maybe get to about halfway with the purple. So it's going to take a bit of time, but we want to cover all of this in with the purple. And just where the purple so meets the rest of it, we want to try and bring it away back towards the front of the weapon. Otherwise, you'll end up, when it dries, you'll end up with a line. And we don't want that, we want it to look natural as best we can. So, the purple is pretty well dried. What we're going to do now, we're going to move over to some blue. So, I'm going to use uh, the Thousand Suns blue and mix in a little bit of the Cantor blues just to make it a little bit darker than that but we will end up putting a wash of the lighter blue over the top towards the end. I have gone over just while I was waiting for purple to dry um, just a couple of little areas you can kind of see just the little vents here uh, that I used a bit of Nihiloc Oxide like oxide this stuff really 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 great stuff to use when uh, weathering metal creates a really lovely copper oxide effect so I've mixed it's about a 50 50 ratio again really nice and watered down and we want to so mm, leave a little little strip of purple showing And then you can go over this as many times as you like, um, just trying out some different volumes of paints, um, different ratios of paint to water, just so you get the result that you like. Now I'm just taking that pure Thousand Suns blue, I'm just going to water it down, and I'm just going to add just a, a little line, just a little layer. Um, mainly sticking towards the end of the weapon and then I will blend that through and into the rest of it. So it's now dry. What we're going to do now is the last couple of steps. So we're going to get our Abaddon black and then what we'll do is chuck it around the cut mat. No, we're going to Oh, I forget that the back thing is broken. Stupid design. Let's get some of those squeezy bottles and said that uh, some of the other companies do. But anyway, we're going to take our Abaddon Black, which is going to fill in just a couple of areas. Um, so just inside the barrels. And then we're going to water it down and do inside our vents as well. So you could go back over the holes with the black a second time if you wanted to, just in case if they're not dark enough. But for me, I think that they are just about all right. So final step is we're going to add a bit of black weathering to the end of the weapon. So for this, I'm going to get 
um, use some of this weathering powder from Ford World Black, so it doesn't have to be from Ford World. It could be from any other sort of painting company that you choose to use. Um, if you don't have any weathering powder, then you can always use um, just Abaddon Black or your kind of your standard um, <laughs> black acrylic paint and just dry brush over the top. Um, I find that the weathering powder just adds a nice uh, sort of matte finish, which looks really, really nice. So I'm going to take a really nice fluffy brush, like this one here. And there will be quite a bit of excess that will come off of this. So if you do this over like a piece of paper or something that you can use to form like a like a V shape, so you can back it back to the bottle afterwards, then that is brilliant. If you don't, you can always just kind of side it around like this. You get as much as you can onto your model. And this is great for using around so sort of vents, exhausts. Um, depending on the type of terrain that your models are on, it could be like a sort of a blackened ash, sort of volcanic wasteland. Um, you can use it for that as well, and it comes up really, really nicely. So if you use too much of the weathering powder, you can always just water down a brush. Water down a brush? Yeah, you know what I mean. Apply a bit of water to the miniature, or to the area and then use a bit of tissue just to remove the excess. And then of course, if you've wiped up a bit too much, you can always reapply it a little bit more afterwards um, until you have the right look for your miniature. So I'm just going to just finalize it here a little bit. and then we'll see it for the end result. So here we have our finished thermal cannon for our Imperial Knights combatant. Uh, this is how I go about painting weathered sort of hot metal effects. If you have any other suggestions, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I have seen other people use um, so hues of green as well in there. It just depends on your sort of style, what kind of reference pictures you found as well, and really what sort of result you'd like at the end of it. Um, but I all hope that you have found something useful in this video. Um, I will show you one of my other thermal cannons from one of my other nights. So here's another example from my own Knight Errant that I have, and I've been painting on and off for quite a few years now, as you can tell by a lot of freehand work. Um, that has gone into this miniature one day. Um, I'm hoping next year I'm going to enter this into, into Golden Demon. So um, yeah, I just got a lot of work to do on the base for this one, but that's another story for another time. If you found this video helpful and inspiring, then do let me know in the comments below and give me a like as well. And if you're new to the channel, a subscribe would be massively appreciated. If you wanted to pick up one of these lovely nights for yourself, then check out Wayland Games. I have a video link to them in the description below and if you want to support me a little bit further then do check out my coffee page as well. All money that would be sent to me will then go back to the channel uh, to get some newer miniatures to paint up and explore different styles and techniques to show all you lovely people at home. So I do hope you are all well wherever you are in the world. Uh, stay safe, stay beautiful and we'll see you next time.